So I have a little project this time, um, literally little. I got this from the Digital Collage Club and it's um, fall, I think it's just called Fall Circles. So it's just got different little fall motifs, um, you know, fall colors, um, squash, <laughs> mushrooms, an acorn, some leaves, that kind of thing. So I cut out three of them, um, just the three on the bottom, and I am going to make charms from them. So I have some pasteboard, just a pancake batter box <laughs> from my local co-op and um, I'm going to just paste these on here and then cut them out and then I'll punch a hole and put an eyelet in the top and actually I probably need six of these because I want to put a picture on the front and the back that would be good okay I gotta pick three more. Um, I'm not gonna be fussy. I'll just do the next three up. They're all fall, so it shouldn't matter. Right? And I think I'll use this, my PVA glue. And I'm just gonna stick them on and then cut them out. There's no point in me cutting out each oval and then, you know, sticking it on when I just have to cut it out again from the pasteboard. So, yeah. I'm still getting used to this bottle and this glue. I haven't used PV in a long time. Oops, I think that was too much. Let's try using my glue spreader. And let's do it on the glue page. This is kind of nice and I don't have to get my fingers dirty. <laughs> or not as dirty, I should say, as gluey. So if you hear my dog barking, I'm trying to edit it out, but <laughs> she's barking a lot because it's Halloween and every time somebody rings the doorbell or my husband open the, opens the door and is talking to the kids, she barks. She's got to protect us, you know, from those evil monsters outside. At least she thinks so. kind of get, getting glue on the corners, but it doesn't matter since I'm only cutting out the oval anyway. Okay, those are glued on. Now I think I'll wait a little bit for them to dry and then cut them out. These are the ones that I glued to pasteboard and cut out. And some of them need a little extra glue. So first let's do that. And then I cut out um, some animal faces from another digital collage club kit use. Another autumn kit, um, really cute, cute animal heads. Okay, so I guess we'll match up, let's see which, I'm gonna go ahead and make 
Well, I've got six. I have five of those cut out. I'll just cut out one more and I'll go ahead and make all of them because I'm sure I can use them in other projects. And then I'll have a choice of which ones to use for this project. I love these scissors so much. They're so easy. So much easier to cut curves with them. These are the Tim Holtz tonic scissors. They have the serrated blades. And they really do make it easier to cut. Okay, well. Maybe I'll just do this randomly. Yeah, that looks good. And they have they each have a different color on the other side. That's fun. <clears throat> okay. There's a little white space on the top, and that is, I guess, because I didn't get it quite far up enough. So I think I'll just ink it and not worry about it. Let's try another one. Hmm. I think that worked good. I'm not sure if that's upside down. So that's good. If I can't tell, probably no one else can tell. Right? Okay, I think I'm getting better at this. love making charms and dangles. They're just so fun. I love tiny things, so that makes sense. Okay, so let's ink them. So you can tell that looks better with just the ink on the top that kind of hides that it's the cardboard. Okay, we're done. So I got my big, big muncher, crocodile big bite to punch holes in these and set eyelets and <laughs> You don't actually need this huge thing. You, you just need a hole punch, but I don't have the right size hole punch, so I'm just going to use this. It's easier. And, hmm. Well, let's punch the holes first. And do I want 
big eyelids or small eyelids? I think I want big eyelids. Yeah. I'm just pulling out all the possible ones that would look good, I think. Yeah, any of those. Um, yeah, let's just pick, pick one randomly. I think they'll all look good. And then let's see if I've got the right setting. No. Okay. Since he has a crown, let's do a gold one. I think the copper ones are my favorite. I wish I had a bunch more of those. Uh, actually, I could probably do these now too. I need to punch these and put eyelets in them. And then we can put the two together. I kind of want to paint these with the Mod Podge. I think I will, just because I want to. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have thrown out that page, but that's okay. I have plenty more. I was going to show you guys my old PVA. That's what it looks like. It's <laughs> very solid. So I think I can probably get rid of that. Okay, so now we have to wait for those to dry and then I will flip them and do the other side. Okay, okay you missed a little part because I thought I turned the camera back on and I didn't. <laughs> but it wasn't that long. It was just this piece. I put, I put the eyelets in, but first I put a piece of this tape that wraps around the front and back. Just as kind of a placeholder to put the eyelet. So I did that on all four of them. I love copper. I love the copper color. So I used copper colored eyelets on all of them too. So that's what you missed. Uh, so now we're gonna play with beads, but first I wanna get the second side of this. Oh, and I just, what did I do? Okay. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just talking to myself. Okay, let's flip them all. I like how they look. They're just a little bit shiny. I'm just going to leave it open. Because it won't take me that long to do this. one. Okay, one left. Let them 
hands dry. And yeah, play with beads. Okay, so just look at the colors we have. So we've got yellow, orange. Covers it. I don't have any brown beads, I don't think. We make a spiral first because we love spirals. Turn it all the way around and then hold it. And will you carefully bend? So it takes a while to make one of these spirals, but it looks really nice. Right? Doesn't that look nice? Just kind of do it a little at a time. Okay, and then we're trying to get it straight up now. Actually, those look kind of brown. That one does. I want to feature this one, so let's put it, some more bends in it to separate these. Lays on there. 
because it doesn't go through this doesn't go through the center it goes like on the side A little, a little room to move. Off. So there's one little dangle. Now how do we want to attach this? We could just put it directly on the card. I have to open these a little more. to do the eyelets pretty close to the edge of the card. I love that. I am definitely making three more of those. <laughs> so these are all going to go in my, my journals that I'm working on right now. And I'll just save the fourth one, whatever. I'm guessing it's probably going to be this one if the glue doesn't dry. If it does, then I'll probably trade out mm, one of these other ones. I don't know, maybe that one. I mean, I like them all, but. Yeah, no. Okay, so I think I will now make some more of these dangles. Make three more. Okay, so I'm not done with making, I'm not done with making the bead dangles, but I kind of have got the hang of doing the spiral now. So I wanted to show you that kind of, let me zoom in. I start with grabbing the end and then pulling it around and you usually got to do that twice to get it all the way around and then because I'm left-handed probably I like to do it clockwise so I'm now I'm using the pliers to hold that loop in place and then I kind of pull the loose end around a little at a time. It's kind of awkward at first. Actually, maybe I can make that a little rounder. Probably should not mess with this. Just trying to squeeze it. Yeah. So now it's a little rounder. It'll be easier to wrap in a circle. So just go around part and then kind of readjust. 
turn. So I'm I'm turning my loose wire hand counterclockwise and I'm not really turning the other hand. I'm just you know, keeping it in one spot and then I just open the pliers, close them, open them, close them, turn the wire, open, turn the whole thing, close them, pull the wire around, open, turn the whole thing, close them, pull the wire around, and just keep going. And you can do it, you know, I would say do it as slow as you want, even if you just want to go a little ways and turn like that. Sometimes that's easier while you're still getting the hang of it, it's just to do a shorter turn. I just think these really look fun, so I like to do them. It's getting pretty short. <laughs> we'll see if that's long enough. It probably is. Okay, so then once I'm kind of done doing that, then I just grab the straight part and flip it back. And then flip it back again. Okay, so then I've got it facing facing up, straight up that way, so I can put some beads on it. So let's do yellow. And I think I do have, I think these other beads I have in here are kind of brown. Oh, there's a different red one. I don't know if I like that. Nah. There are. It's like it depends what light you look at it in. It's either red or brown. Okay, and those were trying those beads are trying to sneak around that corner and I don't want them to do that. So I just squished it down a little. expert <laughs> obviously I just like to play with the wire and the beads so that's kind of how I look at it just playing So I did get, did, oh, uh, did get out these other beads. These are kind of cool. Green with little copper spots on them. And they're kind of side dangles too. Let's see if I can find the hole. And I can show you. There we go. Okay, that's good. Okay. 
and that's really it. That's that's not too short. I mean, it would be fine if it was longer, but really, I think that's enough. I'm just gonna do a loop now and wrap it. Try and wrap it a couple of times, usually. So. So I make a loop like that and probably gonna have to cut it. At a certain point you need to cut it, but I try and start wrapping it, wrapping the loop. Cause that's how I'm ending it. Is um try not to let this loop get too small. Okay, so got your loop. Now you want to try and wrap this around. Wrap the end around, which is tricky somewhat, depending on <laughs> how many other bends you've got in the way. I kind of have this one in the way, but. just use my hands to wrap it around and then I squish it squish it together with these flat nose pliers or flat I don't know what they're called I think they're flat nose pliers And that's kind of getting bent over, but that's okay. I'll bend it back up when I'm done wrapping. Okay, so this got a little bent out from where I put it. So I'll just kind of straighten it to where I want it. And I think I can cut that now. So I'll cut it. Usually put my hand over it or my thumb over it so it doesn't go flying in somebody's eye. And then use these. Um, try and mash that end in so it's not sticking out pokey. No, not quite. I think I got it. Okay. Just trying to shape that a little, make it rounder. Okay, and there you have it. Dingle. Dingle finished. Ta da! So I've only got one more to make and then I'll be back. Okay, guess what I'm getting ready to do? <laughs> I bet you can guess. That's right! I'm going to flick gold paint on these. So far, since I started doing this, I haven't had a project that doesn't seem like it would be better with flicked gold paint. <laughs> so, oh yeah, I started, I didn't have all of my um, oval charms on yet, so I needed to put Looks like two more on. Yeah, okay. So I picked that wolf and the bunny. 
I think that's a bunny. <laughs> it's hard to tell because his ears are leaves. Uh, it could be a squirrel. Well, there's a squirrel. That's a cute squirrel. So what do I want to use? Oh, I love that fox. Look at that sweet face. But I've already used one green one. Didn't I have a brown one? I thought I had a brown one. That must have been the bear. Okay, so we'll, let's do squirrel and deer. And then we'll save badger and fox for another project. Okay. And then after I do this flicking, I think, um, actually, let's keep these in here. We can flick on those. Um, I think I want to add a little something to the back because it still looks a little bit bare. And I have a couple ideas, so we'll look at that in a minute. After we do our flicking. Okay, so now each one has a little oval charm, two-sided oval charm, and a bead dangle. So, okay. So, I still have the cutout, so I'm just gonna pop those babies on. And... I'm trying to think of something I can do with the circles. I'm sure I'll think of something. It's always hard to tell when it starts, when it's flicking. Oh yeah. Now we're talking. <laughs> if I can hold on to it. <sighs> okay, I think that's better. Um, now I'm gonna dry these and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I've got a few things. I thought might work on the back. One is my German paper, my um, a page from my antique German book. Another thing is these rubber stamps that I recently got at Michael's in like their cheap bins. I think they were three bucks each. And then I got out, I got these, this wasn't quite what I was thinking these were, <laughs> but they are, uh, I think they're pigment ink pads. That's what I was thinking they were when I, uh, when I bought them. I don't know if they are, but... They might work with those, and then I could put some embossing powder on them. And then I have this um, antique paper. You can feel, I wish you could feel it. It's so cool. You can feel like the text on it, and you can feel that it's got cloth in it, it's not just wood pulp. So that was from a packet of um, antique text, what am I trying to say, book pages, thank you, <laughs> book pages from Rachel, <clears throat> from her shop. So and then I've got this from a friend recently who's cleaning out her craft room, thank you Sue. 
so I thought maybe, I'm not sure if this will fit into this project, but I grabbed it just in case. Okay, let's see. Well, it's juicy, that's for sure. This has got to be pigment. Oh, don't stamp that. Well, eh, I don't know. Um, let's go with this. Yeah, those, those look like pigment juices. Okay, and then... This is just my clear embossing powder. That looks really nice. Cool. Yeah, so I think I want to do some of that for the back of these tags. But do I want to do... wondering if I want to do it on a different piece of paper first and then glue it on then I don't have the problem of worrying about the plastic getting too hot while I'm melting the heat embossing powder <clears throat> that color it goes nicely with this green on the other side so that'd be cool so I might use that that one just use this space right here. That's kind of what I was thinking. Um, that'd be neat to have that heard up there. Oh, I hate to write on this. <laughs> it feels like a crime. A crime is being committed against paper. So, I could do that. because this is so delicate. Hmm. I could just use the Italian page. Maybe I will do that. This feels a little too big though, this edge is like a little too neat. Maybe. I 
could stamp down here. do a butterfly that would be weird I could do a bee I could do a dragonfly that'd be cool or a ladybug or a flower or both I could do a bee up here and then a flower down here I like this one, but it's pretty big. I think it might be too big for this project. So, one of these two small ones. They do a big dragonfly up there. And I could do it on my green paper. use this as a template and figure out a couple more. Oh, and it's got three columns. Nice. So I could get these big words again. So I'm not tracing it exactly except for that edge. Like down here, I'm going kind of way out. And this I'm not tracing exactly because I want to give myself room to do, you know, a, a real edge. <clears throat> so I'm going to cut it out like that and then rip to get a nice edge around this side. This one is on the other side. I wonder if that how would still work. If I flip it. Um, okay, what I need to do Yeah, those other three are the same. Okay. Um what I mean? I need it on that side. Okay. So now I think we can glue this. Glue this one down, but not on that paper. Stick this paper, my glue paper. Lots of glue on it. Oh, and you know what I should have done? Inked it before I put the glue on. No matter, I can ink it. And then if the glue feels dry,
can't hold it against this because it's got glue on it. Oh, that's good. Okay. We're doing good. The next, the next one will be easier. It won't have glue on it. Jeez. I'm going to glue myself to the page. So sticky. It's like it really adheres to this paper. with the words. So cool. I love old books. Yeah, that looks neat. It just needs something else on the bottom. is smaller because it's poetry. Let's do this one. Okay. Oh, it's written in. Well, I guess that's good. I mean, somebody wrote, read it, read it. Okay, so we will do four green flowers. Those are coated. Perfect. 
I think the gold one gets lost. Orange is kind of nice. I think I'm going to cut these out. Let's do... Black looks really good too. <laughs> oh, I've got the three dragonflies cut out. the orange one which I did orange because there's orange in the wings but no I don't really like that there's brown I like that I did want to see what if we reversed these no, there's not enough room for a for dragonfly down there. Too bad. So that means the flower needs to be down here. Oh, the dragonfly can just be up here. Somewhere. So that's brown, and then this is black. And the black, I actually realized... The details next to his head are antenna or front legs, I don't know which, <laughs> but I couldn't even see that on the other ones. I couldn't uh, make out that detail, so. so maybe we should go with the black. Okay, so now I need to make three more black dragonflies. So I shall be right back. Okay, so I've got those cut out. Now we can glue the flowers and the dragonflies on. Um, I think I'm going to use the art glitter glue for the dragonflies. And the flowers, I'll just use glue stick. I think that'll work fine. Oh, and should I ink the edges? Yeah, I think so. Of course, I always think of this after, <laughs> after I put the glue on. Why do I do that? I don't have to put the text right side up or whatever. I like that. It looks interesting. Okay. Um, no, I'm not going to ink the dragonflies, they're just, they would be too hard because I cut them so close. So. I like the mix of different texts, that's fun. English, Italian, and who knows what that is. Can't really see it enough to read it. Okay, that was the glue stick. We're done with that. Okay, so I Should I be going down or up? I think it looks better down. I'm not sure why. Let's go with it. Go 
this makes it feel more enclosed, like a little world with him flying towards everything instead of up and away. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. I was watching a video of uh, Louisa making ephemera for Barbara and 49 dragonflies for her five, is it five people? I think five different artists doing ephemera for a, a folio that Barbara is making. And I just love the stories that Louisa was telling about um, her little critters because <laughs> she used, she did like a, a mashup of um, one of her digitals and then the one that Barbara provided. So I, I like the way her brain works. <laughs> she was explaining like why she was putting buttons on this tag and it was for the squirrel to have something to play with. <laughs> So cute. Oh no. Oh, what happened? Dang it. Oh boy. Well, it looks like my. Uh, shoot. Uh, my leaf stuck to glue on the glue page and it pulled off the Mod Podge and it's like pulling off the color. Okay, before that gets any worse, I'm just gonna cut the glue. Now, I'm gonna put more Mod Podge on it so it... Ooh, okay. I got the drying fly on. Didn't know it was sticky to anything. Dang it. Hope I can repair it enough. Those are done. <clears throat> I'm probably going to think of something else. Oh, there was one other thing I thought of. I was putting um, faux stitches on. Because I'm not going to sew these. They're, I've already got <clears throat> the eyelets in and I don't want to deal with that. But I think it would look nice to draw stitches around. I'll think about it. Otherwise, I think that's that's it. I think I'm very happy with these, how they came out. They're just kind of nature themed and vintagey and naturey with my my leaves. I love the leaves. And these new stamps are really fun too. I haven't worked with dye or with pigment ink in quite a while. You know, we've all been using Tim Holtz Distress inks forever, it seems like. And um, I miss doing the embossing, which you have to have pigment inks to do that. So I'm glad I got some. I think I'll be playing with those more. 
so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope I gave you some ideas to play in your own journals. And I will just see you in the next video. Okay, take care. Bye.